All right, guys. Good morning to all of you. My name is Abhishek Gupta, and I am delighted to welcome an elite panel of career coaches, counselors, and educators right here, talking to you from India, Dubai, and United States of America. So uh, let me quickly introduce you to the panel. I have uh, Miss Anamika Sethi. Miss Anamika Sethi is. Uh, is a great career counselor herself. She's a high school counselor with DPS Gurgaon, Delhi Public School Gurgaon. She carries 16 phenomenal years of experience in behavioral and career counseling. And, uh, and she is speaking to all of us uh, 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 on early morning from Dubai. So she's based out of Dubai right now and talking to all of you from Dubai. Perfect. Then we have... Uh, Ashley. Ashley is joining from uh, Florida. Uh, it's almost uh, 2.30 a.m. in the morning in Florida right now. And uh, we really, really thank you, Ashley, for taking our time, uh, taking the effort of getting up early morning, disturbing your sleep for almost 300 people in the Zoom room right now. So way beyond my expectations uh, in the Zoom room. So thank you so very much. Ashley is an international education consultant. She is a parent herself. Uh, after graduating with a bachelor's degree in business management from Bucknell, uh, Ashley spent four years teaching English in Germany and Spain with a certificate in college counseling from University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, she founded her own organization called ACM College Consulting. And for past six years, she has worked with crazy number of students and that to international students in the, and helping them and their families finding their right fit colleges, guiding them successfully to the best of the colleges uh, abroad. She is also a member of Higher Education Consultants Association, HICA, and ICAC. So welcome, Ashley. And uh, I can only apologize for waking you up uh, early morning uh, or not letting you sleep, rather. Then I have uh, Tanushri. Tanushri is the founder member of the Shivnather School uh, Fraternity in Gurgaon. Uh, she is with the organization since 2011. She has handled multiple roles in the organization and is currently the head of career guidance cell at Shivnather School Gurgaon, where the major responsibilities are to conceptualize and effectuate the career guidance cell. And I really welcome you, Tanushri, and you are speaking live from Gurgaon. Then I have Samir. Okay, so what do I say? Samir is the vice principal of Legacy School Bangalore, a person who has, uh, who has worked in several international organizations. He has designed experimental education programs for children around the world with prestigious organizations like Johnson Space Center, Kennedy Space Center, CERN, McAfee, Intel, Oh my God, Samir, I really cannot read all of them. A natural leader, a collaborator, an educator with 15 years of experience, somebody who has spoken to thousands and thousands of students over his, his career as an educator, and we are delighted to have you, Samir. Thank you so very much for taking our time from Bangalore and joining us. Then I have Dr. Shitija. Dr. Shitija's video is not available right now. And oh my God, we are 350 in the Zoom room right now. So this is again 100 plus and we are 3,400 across the Facebook pages. Okay, super awesome. So we have Dr. Shitija. She will be joining in in next couple of minutes. Should be there available on the video. She's just hopping in, hopping out of another Zoom room. Guys, this is crazy, all right? This is super crazy having so many leaders from the field of education coming all together to talk to all of you. And by the time I would hand over the mic to Nagma, I'm very sure there'll be 4,000 people plus listening to us. So this is super crazy. Please make the most of it. Uh, please see that people like Dr. Shitija are actually moving in and moving out of Zoom rooms. They are into multiple panel discussions at the same time. And it is not easy. And this is being done only and only for you your families, your colleagues, your friends, your peers. So make the best out of it. Keep your pen and papers ready. And my only request to all of you is, uh, do not leave midway, all right? Do not leave midway. 
because half knowledge is dangerous. So we have Dr. Shridhar Singh. She is an experienced career counselor and an admissions officer from Hopetown Girls Dehradun, uh, a thought leader at Ines.org, like everybody else here, a certified career counselor from UCLA again, and she also carries a PhD in economics. So that's uh, Dr. Shitija. Then I have Nagma. And what do I say? What do I say about Nagma? Okay. So Nagma is an experienced psychologist with more than 12 years of experience in providing career and behavioral counseling. She has conducted several workshops. Uh, she carried a, a master's degree from USA, currently heading again the higher education and career counseling division at DPS International, one of the finest schools in North India. So welcome Nagma and Nagma will be the co-host of the panel. And now let's come to Prasija, another co-host of the panel today. Prasija is joining in from Stonehill International, Bangalore. Thank you so much, Prasija, for taking our time. She serves as the career and guidance counselor in Stonehill International. For the past three years, she has counseled students for higher education, both in India and abroad. And the great part about this discussion, guys, is that we are not going to focus on uh, what is known to you. We are definitely not going to talk about what is Google. Uh, you know, what is available on the first few pages of Google. We are talking about experience today. So my only request to all of you is sit back, hold tight. This is going to be one hell of a ride, roller coaster for next one hour. So Prasija is, uh, has, has a teaching experience of over five years, taught across various uh, Indian and international schools. Her journey from a network and control engineer, and this is news to me, into a reputed automotive firm, to becoming a career counselor is phenomenal. So guys, thank you so very much for joining in for your respective locations. We are 4,342 on Facebook, almost close to page 400 on Zoom. And with this, I hand over the mic to Nagma. But before I do that, I take quick 30 seconds and tell you about who we are. So this panel discussion is being brought to you by High School Moms. High School Moms is India's maiden parent community. And it has taken the initiative of bringing the best of the educators absolutely free of cost, requesting them, taking their time out to talk to people like you. So uh, my only request to all of you is for all those people who are listening to us and who are still not on High School Moms community, you need to do one thing right now. Right now, you need to go to your Facebook, type in High School Moms group. The moment you type in High School Moms group, it will land you to a high school mom's page. The moment you land you, on, uh, land, land you on the high school mom's page, it will ask you to join in. When you click join in, it will ask you for two, three questions to verify yourself. And boom, you will be expect, accepted in the high school mom's group. And you will not have to wait for emailers and registrations to join in to listen to such great stalwarts. So that's it from my side. Over to Nagma, your show, your day. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Good morning, everyone. So uh, before we move further, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce Mr. Abhishek Gupta, who is our executive director of INA. Um, Mr. Gupta, wow, he's an education icon. He's a speaker. He's, a, he's an author. He's the founder of INA. Um, he's the alumni of the University of California, Los Angeles. He's the recipient of Science Education Icon Award. He has counseled over 20,000 students and conducted over 500 career counseling workshops in India and abroad. Mr. Gupta is also the founder of the International Alliance of Counselors and Educators. He has won several awards, including the World Education Conclave Award in 2018 and 2019. An expert in international education, Mr. Gupta is also an internal uh, counselor with several leading educational companies. So thank you, Abhishek. And um, now uh, let's start with, uh, you know, wh why, this, why this panel, why this mission, why this movement? So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to Google the word career counseling. And the moment you will uh, Google the word career counseling, one word which uh, is very popular there is uh, called exclusive. So if you will Google uh, career counseling, what you will find, you'll find it's an exclusive service. 
to uh, the Nagma, ma'am, can I request you to be a little louder? A little louder, please. Yes, yes, sure. So, um, am I am I better now? Am yes. I? Yes. Um, okay. Better. Thank you. So, so um, you know, this whole this movement is aimed to make career counseling in exclusive. We are um, um, like-minded uh, people who have got together to take it to the masses, to take it, to make it uh, inclusive. Everyone is, has the right for career counseling. That is one thing with which this movement is, has actually started. Um, it is, you know, why, again, why do we want to make, take it to all the masses? It is okay. It is okay. If career counseling is confined to a few. The, the problem now is that this world where everything is changing, this is a never changing world, we are realizing that, you know, people who are stuck in the wrong fit, they, they are stuck there. And, you know, a lot of parents are here today. And if you can reflect and think about, oh my God, if only I would have done this. That is, that is the whole question here. We are, as a team, we are going to focus on bringing the right fit for all the students. And that is where, why we have got together. This is first of its kind, but this is not the only one. We are going to move forward with uh, more in this uh, chapter. So um, again, when we, uh, all of us got together and all of us started talking about INACE and we thought, Exactly. What do we want to do with this movement? What, what, how is it going to be different from many others which are there? So uh, the first thing we realized is that, um, you know, we have the power of uh, resources here. And that those strong resources we want to bring to the parents and students. Um, and we want to make it real, relevant, and authentic. That is what we realize we have to do. So what do you mean, really mean by real? So we realize that real, we want to bring to you what actually works in life and not what is, you know, what you have read somewhere about some other context. And just because it is available in Google and as Mr. Abhishek just shared, we all have that information in our hands, but we have to make it real. We have to make it uh, bring to you what really, really works for you. We want to prepare you for life and not for mock drill. And that is, uh, you know, from where our real comes in our movement. Then we also want to make it relevant. So it's, why relevant? Relevant because then it needs to focus on you, you as a student and what you need uh, for yourself to grow. It should provide meaning to your journey. That's the relevant part of it. And it needs to be authentic. All of us here have promised ourselves to be true to ourselves. And in return, what will happen? We'll be true to the movement. We'll bring to you information and resources which will be uh, meaningful for you, which will shape up your uh, journey, will, which will give you a direction. So this is a little bit about our movement. This is who we are. And this is how we have got together. This is where our thoughts actually sink in. So uh, starting from here, I'm going to hand over the mic to Ms. Prasija now, who is going to um, set up the tone for this session. Ms. Prasija. Thank you, Nagma. Thank you, Nagma, for that overwhelming introduction. Thank you, Abhishek, for that warm introduction and inviting me to Ines and High School Mom. I cannot tell you how proud I am. I feel privileged to be able to contribute to this noble cause. And, um, you know, when I was invited to be a part of this movement, um, something stuck, something resonated with me, uh, you know, and stayed with me since then. And it was about the feeling of togetherness. It's not about working in isolation when we are thinking about career counseling. It was about, you know, feeling of collaboration. And the need to be authentic, right? Nagma, you pointed out absolutely right. The need to be authentic. There is so much information and there is so much data being spit out there uh, on the internet, on publishing websites and various other platforms that it becomes absolutely important that we as responsible counselors and responsible coaches give out authentic information to the important stakeholders out there. So um, 
you know yeah that's that's my take on it and uh, coming back to the panelist i may be the youngest and the you know sort of least a little less experience than all the other experienced members out here but i feel i would just pick a take on what ms nagma pointed out earlier was resource i guess uh, in my case the experience has been a resource and in all our parents and attendees today i can you know vouch that their experience is a resource a lot of time we fall back on our own experiences to be able to make a decision for our children so parents out here uh, a very warm welcome thank you for attending the session taking out time on a sunday morning to listen to all of us and i really appreciate that today's session we are not going to be giving you tips of do's and don'ts which you can get uh you know umpteen number of times when you you know it's available everywhere and in abundance advice is something that is available everywhere and in abundance and you know your kids better than anyone else here we are today to just get you thinking uh share our perspectives share what we have learned through our experiences and our counseling and our coaching um with a variety of um you know students and parents coming from various different uh, backgrounds and we can all be confident here to uh, share what we feel um has worked out in the uh, in the past will work out in the future uh, because let's let's look at it um times have changed uh, we are all dealing with millennials and centennials um uh, we are all um you know we all want everything instant um you know we are all living in this z- z- mode of instant gratification uh you know click on your comment and say if you if you believe that's right you want everything instantly you want everything quick and uh, if we as adults are in that mode of operation imagine what our kids our children are going through they are you know uh, ahead of us they are used we we found we saw internet coming we saw the revolution in technology taking place we I saw that everybody thinks that uh, instant gratification is something that everybody wants i saw that <laughs> some of them are so keen on that uh, they are even messaging that just start on with the discussion they don't realize that there has to be a prelude to the discussion so everybody wants instant gratification and, right. and so right awesome right. very good go please go ahead yeah so i'm i'm, I'm saying think about the children they want it even more than us but here when when i stand here when i talk here and and on behalf of all the panelists um you know we have a very i have a very different take on it because when we deal with students we know what they're going through and we are here to help parents be um a part of their journey a parents be together with us to help take an informed decision about your kids to uh, for parents to be able to um you know walk with the student have a conversation understand what they want and prepare for a future prepare for a job that does not exist we are doing it in our cubicles and we are coming here to come up you know to kind of expand that horizon so that parents are together with us and it's all for one cause that our students our children are prepared for a future that does not exist yet um uh, so quickly to move on with the session i'd like to uh you know find out or understand a little bit about who my audience is and who our audience is going to be today um so attendees um i'm going to just you'll see a poll on your uh, screen in a moment and if you could just click on the responses that suit um you the best it'll be um you know it'll be it'll be helpful for us to get a good understanding of who we are attending to so your poll is live you might want to start um you know entering your responses there all right guys so let's have we have about 450 people in the zoom room uh prasija's first poll should ideally have about 75% uh voting let's quickly understand before we begin the show uh right. our first question is how many of us here today are parents student counselors or stakeholders so prasija this is a very 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 spread out uh, yeah. a, a lot of problem to our uh, panelists out there i see 50% as parents and almost 40% as students there right. are definitely some counselors who are already here uh, right. who are trying to learn from you so pretty well spread out uh, super awesome uh, i think by yes we are close to 75% of the attendees so it give, gives us a great idea uh, yeah. each of these grades uh, are your children studying in uh wow this is phenomenal 85% between grade 8 and 12 so guys 
Uh, nothing gets more exciting for us uh, as high school counselors than to see that our maximum janta out there is from high school. So this is super phenomenal. And you know, beauty that, that this 85% signifies is, uh, is that you guys are willing to learn and you guys are willing to really uh, you know, imbibe the best of the practices. So thank you so very much. Uh, uh, so Prasija, do you need any other poll right now? No, I, I'm going to end the poll and thank you everyone for the overwhelming response. I think we have a we have a very good clarity. Our our audience is a good mix of parents and students, and predominantly from the high school, eighth grade to twelfth grade, and a lot of you know around eleven percent of our audience are counselors, teachers, and principal, which is a great addition. We are all important stakeholders in this journey together. So welcome aboard. Yeah. So okay. um, go ahead. Okay, so thank you, Prasija. Thank you for this poll. Uh, so, um, because we have quite a mixed audience today, uh, I am going to uh, bring uh, Mr. Samir on the spotlight here. And I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Samir uh, a question which uh, is going to be a little tricky, sir, uh, but you silent for it. So, uh, my first question to you, and before I pose this question, uh, there's another uh, poll which uh, Ms. Prasija is going to till uh, that time going to um, post, which will be directed to the parents. So the parents are supposed to um, um, vote for that poll. Um, so just to let you know, please uh, do vote. To, uh, coming back to uh, Mr. Samir. Mr. Samir, um, because we have a mixed audience, uh, I'm going to ask you this question. and. Um, you know, it's going to be something which um, is um, you, your uh, response should be based on your experience. Um, so who should make the career choice? Who should take the driving seat? Is it something which uh, the parents are supposed to take the driver's seat and uh, decide for their two, uh, children? Or is it all about the student because it's their life? So what to you, Mr. Samuel? Uh, Nagma, I'd like to share uh, some of the poll results, very interesting results before Sami takes on. I think it'll be very important, heads up, very important, you know, info uh, for Sami to actually, you know, go out and speak to the audiences. We have around 30% of our audience who says clear about career goals but need expert advice. Around 23% of our audiences says no idea where to start or where we are heading. And we have around 25% of parents who said uh, we are somewhat confused. Uh, all right, so I think that's that's uh, you know I, I've got 65% of the audiences voting. Audiences, parents, students, uh, you know, parents especially uh, request you to go ahead and um, you know fill in your responses if you haven't done so. So Samir is the right person to take you further to give you expert advice or help you understand you know what you do when you're confused or you know even give you a head start if you do not know where you're heading. And um, yeah. Europe. Thank you, Nagma and Prasija, and thank you, panelists, and Abhishek, bringing the whole community together. And thank you, attendees. We'll make it short and crisp for all of you. I think one of the first questions as a counselor or as, as an educator when I meet parents or children or meet them independently is, what should they do? Should they follow a parent major or should they call, follow a passion major? So what is a parent major and what is a passion major? Parent major is a career choice which a parent makes for the child and passion major is the career choice which a child makes for himself. And I think there are multiple uh, perspectives which I've heard. Of course, if, if you have any other perspective, please add on. Generally, when I meet parents, what are their arguments in favor of making a career choice for their child? They feel they are experienced of life. Hence, they are more prepared to make a career life decision without even realizing the future of jobs is not even been invented, right? So are they really prepared? That's the first question they need to ask themselves. Of course, a lot of parents uh, that I've experienced at my own home, my own journey, that they have their own desires and knowledge. They wanted to become an engineer or a doctor. They either ended up becoming one or didn't end up becoming one. So they feel if they ended up becoming one, genetically, the child is prepared to become an engineer or a doctor. And if they haven't been ended up becoming one, why can't the child become one? So I think that's, that's another question which comes from parents. Um, again, uh, this is... I get this question very, very, or statement, this is, but this is real, but I still get it. It says, I'm financially supporting my child in his career journey. So why should I be the one who's making the, pulling the major shots? So that's another choice of perspective. Um, 
again, one very, very common statement which parents make is, see, I told your sibling, I told your sister, and see how well she's doing in life. Learn from her. I mean, if, if she followed my advice and she did well, so will you be. So these are the arguments of parents. Then if I come back to the child's perspective, when I meet children independently, they feel it's their choice. It's their life. It's their choice. They have the right to choose what career they should choose. And second common uh, you know, question comes, if you are asking me to follow parent major or what my parents are expecting me to do, and I don't have interest or aptitude for that, what kind of success rate do I have in, when I graduate into life? Uh, again, third thing is, which, which I completely resonate with, if they make a choice, they're responsible for their choice. They can't be responsible for the choices the adults are making for them. So I think this is, this is a catch-22 situation. And I always say, that it is a journey of partnership. And it's not a journey of partnership between just a parent and the child. It's a journey of partnership also as a school, as an important stakeholder in a child's success in his life and career. So I think uh, we have to find a midway where the child's interest and aptitude has to become the anchor of the conversation. And the parent's experience and research and contacts can play a very, very important role. And the school can partner or any profession can partner with helping parent and child come up with effective research methodology. And a lot of planning goes with it, right? So that's, that's, that's very important. Another challenge which I face with children is parents always tell children, when the time will come, we will tell you. When will the time come? I've had cases in last three to five years of my experience where a child has reached a written standardized test like SAT, he wanted to go to the US and parents suddenly felt either they had, don't have financial bandwidth to support the child, or they feel it's too early. And then the trade-off is, uh, why don't you stay back for undergraduate uh, in India, which is closer home, and I'll send you later. And I think, I think these kind of conversations are very, very important to start happening in the family as a, as a family conversation, serious conversations from as early as end of grade eight, beginning of grade nine. That's when in many curriculum students also make the subject choices. And I think one, one very important advice to parents is that they need to keep three levels of preparedness at their end. From eighth standard onwards, they should start having their research and conversations in their peer group or in their family groups or, or with experts. Are they emotionally prepared to send their child that far? Are they socially prepared to live? I mean, is the child socially prepared to be independent? Are they financially prepared uh, uh, to support the child in his journey of education if he's choosing a path which is going to come at a higher cost. So I think that's, that's very important. I was reading a study which said, uh, this was conducted by, I think, Times of India for about 10,000 odd students in India. And 93% students only knew seven, per seven career choices. Only seven career choices. And if I look at it, there are almost, as a career counselor, there are almost 250 odd career options available leading up to 5,000 different kinds of jobs. And I don't think I can even in Emirates sit down immediately and give you 250 career options unless I go back and research. So I think it's, it's a collaborative journey. It needs mm -hmm. a child's support, a child's passion as an anchor, parents support, research, resources as a support, and school and counselors uh, partnership as an expert advice or a professional advice to make it a meaningful experience for all of us. So please start doing this conversation as early as end of grade eight or beginning of grade nine. Sure. What do you know? Uh, yeah, thank you, Samir. So uh, I agree with you completely. It's a catch-22 situation. As counselors, all of us have come acro across, uh, you know, these discussions in our rooms where we are uh, being a mediator between the parent and the student. So I agree with you completely when you say it should be the dinner time talk, right? It should become uh, an everyday affair in your life. And um, parents, students, we request you to start having this discussion and real discussions. You know, if whatever is your condition, your family situation, be open to your child. Start having uh, this discussion as early as from the middle school of a child's life. So based on that, Samir, um, I know that you have these eight simple rules of career counseling which you have framed. You'd uh, be really uh, delighted to hear about it. Please, Mr. Samir. Thank you, Nagma. I am very, uh, very keen on uh, giving very, very simple breakaway rules. So I, I will just talk about eight rules I talk about with children and parents when they start making career choice. The first rule is for parents. Stop treating your child as an extension. You are not your child and so is vice versa. 
I mean, if you ended up becoming a successful engineer, even when you did not want to become, doesn't mean that your child has to continue your journey forward. So please treat your child as an independent entity. See him as a whole child whose interests, aptitude and abilities are kept in mind while the career decision is being taken. Second thing, which is very important rule, help them explore their interests, aptitudes through programs like job shadowing. We do a job shadowing program in our school, Legacy School Bangalore, and we do also do internship program for high school students, senior high school students in grade 11th and 12th. Uh, summer schools are a great way to explore their interests. Um, I mean, I recently had a case where a child wanting to become a doctor from grade four onwards. Uh, she wanted to take a gap year in grade 12, after grade 12 so that she can prepare for NEET. You know that even if you want to study medicine overseas, you still have to write NEET examination in India. So she figured out the colleges she wanted to go to. She's figured out her chart, but I told her, I just advised her. I said, see, you have a lot of time in your gap year. Why don't you intern or volunteer with the hospital? For sure, three months volunteering in the hospital, she came back to me, Sunny said, I have to have a serious conversation with you. I said, what is that? She says, I can be anything but not doctor. So, I mean, it was very shocking for me, a child who's been planning to become doctor for eight years of her life. And suddenly, and I asked her, I said, what made you think in the first way you wanted to become a doctor? Her answer was very funny. She says, my mother used to watch Grey's Anatomy and I've watched some serials and Meredith Grey is my role model. So the child's inspiration is coming from a fictitious character of a, of a soap opera which she's watched. She's never really realized what are the realities of those professions. And when she has to deal with that, she said that she cannot become one. And now she's choosing to pursue biology and chemistry majors so that she can come back Hold on, she can come back and use her grandmother's recipes of uh, uh, you know cosmetics and start an organic, pure cosmetic line for herself. So imagine from child who wanted to become a doctor is becoming an entrepreneur now. So there are many such stories we can talk about and find around ourselves. The rule number three, use diagnostic tools. There are a lot of diagnostic tools available. These are psychometric tests, which comprise either the cognitive, which check their aptitude and ability, or their personality tests or interest tests. Use a variety of them, just don't use one. And these tests are not like prescriptive, like a doctor's prescription. If you have to take an antibiotic and anti allergy, you have to take it. You have to see it, and then you have to either have a professional advice or talk to the school and just see what the results are showing at different times. Is it matching with what my child is wanting to do? And if the choice of your child's career is not in line with their interest, don't rule out that career option. Just because the child hasn't shown potential in early years does not mean that he cannot become one. Brainstorm with your child. How can they bring their strengths to that field? And that might just surprise you. Rule number four, help them find a mentor and don't be one. I mean, this is, this is just uh, something which is a lot of debate because a lot of parents come back and say, hey, I share a great relationship with my daughter. Why can't I be a mentor? So great, if you can become a mentor, become one. But what my advice to generally parents is, parents should, mentor should be somebody a child can go uninhabited with any emotional baggage and say, okay, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I want to do. But this is the kind of conversation I feel obligated to have with my parents. And as a parent, you may have to pull ranks. You may have to dole out punishments. You may have to set boundaries for your children. And trust me, it's very hard for a parent to find an equilibrium of treating a child, leave alone being... Uh, an adult, even or leave alone being equal, even an adult, you can't treat your child as a young adult. Rule number six, career exploration process in today's time where there are 250 career options, which has been listed out by times and 5,000 odd job career opportunities. It can be very overwhelming and it's very dynamic. It is not static. If you decided to become doctor at the end of grade, end of grade eight, you'll become doctor or you'll get into medicine after grade 11, uh, after grade 12. I recently had a case, a child wanted to become an architect. His circumstances changed. He uh, attended two, uh, uh, you know, uh, two seminars with uh, when LSAT organization and and uh, OP General School. He's choosing to become a lawyer at the end of grade twelve, right? So this is very dynamic and fluid process. Have a conversation with your child about uh, the love and finding somebody's love, finding somebody's passion is a long process of self discovery, experimenting. I'm still finding it, though. I think one of my first passion is working with children. Um, again, the key to a successful accomplished journey is keep learning more and more about themselves so that they can become accomplished individuals they are meant to be. It's not only overwhelming for your child, it's also overwhelming for you. Uh, what you need to do is start early, as early as end of grade eight and beginning of grade nine. I cannot reinforce more than that. Please start early. Sign up for webinars. A lot of universities, a lot of counselors, a lot of schools are doing webinars. I think a lot of schools have started doing 
open career days. We do it in our school. Read up, talk to peers whose children are in higher education, talk to cousins, family whose children are in higher education. Learn from their experiences, but do not bring those expectations back. Hey, your uncle's daughter has gone to Cambridge. See how bright she is. You don't know about her journey. Go back and look at her support system. Hey, your my friend's son has gone to MIT or UCLA. Sorry, Abhishek, this is mentioning USLA, UCLA, dropping names. But you have to go back and see the child as a whole, what was his journey, and then bring back that research to your child as a dinner table conversation. Rule number seven, help them work on decision building skills by giving them a choice of making a few decisions. I think we even today, you know, my mom tries to make choices for me. In India, we are socially conditioned to protect our children. Please don't do so. Let them allow them to make some small mistakes in their high school years or the years, formative years from grade eight to 12. If they want to go out for a, for a party just before an exam, it's okay. They will fail one exam. They will not fail life, right? When they start making small choices for them and they fail in their decisions, they come back and have reflection exercises with them. That will help them understand that what my parent was saying, not telling I told you, but just help them understand what did go wrong. You took this decision. You chose this hobby. You chose this organization to volunteer with. You were passionate about pets. Why are you not able to uh, you know, volunteer with Kupa or Care? So kind of reflection exercises are very important. Don't pick on them. Last and most important rule, rule number eight. I'm sure parents will be happy about it. I hope students, you are also happy about it. Work hard and smart. There is no substitute for hard work at all. I always say, I'm not talking about grades here. I'm saying, so encourage your children to maintain good work ethics. How many hours a day I want to study? Which subjects I want to focus on? Where do I need extra support on? All these questions will help them maintain a consistent grades and universities love that. Universities love to see either a consistent grade or a rising grades chart. And right balance of course scholastic activities. Multiple times my children come to me and they say, I did 10 activities last year. Should I put it in my brag sheet? Should I put it in my profile? I always say when it is about career, please less is more. Do two activities, but do it so passionately and do it so well that it leaves you a transformative experience than a transactional one that I did 10 things, right? Uh, again, plan your standardized test. This is some jargons maybe floating around, but we can, we'll be happy to answer. Plan the standardized test based on the country they're applying to. If they're studying, uh, aspiring to study in India in IISC, probably they have to do KVPY and they need to start preparing from grade nine because they write that test in grade 11 and 12. If they're going to US, they may want to write SAT scores, SATs. So, in addition to rule number eight, one additional, I would say 8.1 and 8.2, have a plan B. I think in no better times I can reinforce in this time where a lot of my students are rethinking their decisions of their first option of going overseas. Have a plan B that if what if this does not work out? What if second thing does not work out? Always have a plan B. If the school your child goes to has a career counselor, start having early conversations with the guidance and career counselor. If the school does not have one, do your research, become a career counselor yourself. It's a very, very satisfying and gratifying uh, experience and journey. Um, and uh, there are a lot of organizations which do ethical career and guidance counseling, seek help and work out a road plan of plan A and plan B. And there is a very interesting report by uh, World Economic Forum. It's called Future of Jobs 2018 because most of you would be graduating into the job which World Economic Forum has talked about. Please download it. It's free resource. Read it. And thank you, Nagma. Over to you back. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Wow. Okay. So super awesome. My request to all the panelists out there is now uh, we have the agenda set. We have eight golden rules written by uh, Samir Arora. And uh, like I generally say that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. So Samir, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to take inspiration from these eight rules and write a book myself. Credits will be given to you, but no royalty. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, so thank you so much, Samir. A couple of very, very important things which came out of, uh, of your uh, eight rules. One was spending desert time with your kids. And, and it's, it's really important to all the parents out there. There is no career counseling possible without discussion. Uh, please understand if it's in your head, it is not there. You have to have what is there in your head has to be there on the paper. And if you have to put it onto the paper, you have to have desert time discussions with your children. Second important thing with Samir really uh, stressed out with uh, legacy school is very, very focused on is doing job shadowing. In my language, when students come to me and there are almost like, Samir, there are almost like 2,500 students who chase me every year. 
and I keep on telling them that get this thing right. A profile is not for international colleges. Profile is for life. Okay. And profile is for your life learning. So job shadowing, internships, maybe summer programs, depending upon your budgets, nobody is asking you to pick up a, a really expensive summer program. Money is not the criteria here. Learning is. So please do push your children into real life experiences. Let them do a dipstick because you will see umpteen number of times all our panelists telling you that somebody who wanted to become a doctor became an entrepreneur. I mean, I passed out of, uh, of Anderson School of Management, studying management in the corporate, today being a career counselor. So, you know, another very interesting study from World Economic Forum is that people like us might have changed five jobs, but your kids out there will change five careers. So if you do not allow your kids to actually do a dipstick, it's going to be a, a big problem later on in life. Thank you so much, Samir. I, I really want you to hold back. Nagma, you have posed a very, very difficult question to Samir and that to that to back to back in uh, in a row. All right. So this is now time for you to pay back. Okay. I have two okay. questions to you. I have two questions mm -hmm. to you and I want you to be really crisp, really short and, mm -hmm. and, and help the audience because now we have about 460 fluctuating to 470 in Zoom room, almost like 4,300 plus across Facebook pages. So we are talking about 5,000 people listening to us. So my question to you is, Samir said 250 careers leading to 5,000 jobs. Wow, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I was supposed to be doing this discussion with you and me to make it easy for the children, right? So yes. it is not easy. It's definitely not easy. It's not impossible either. Because if you do what Samir said, do your dipstick, do your interest assessment, aptitude assessment, personality assessment, see whether you want to be in front of the desk or you want to be in front of a person, you know, what kind of a person are you, right? That all can help. Understood. Question. COVID has changed everything. Mm -hmm. There have been zillion panel discussions. There is an epidemic of, of webinars which is happening out there. Mm -hmm. This webinar is about real, relevant, and authentic mm -hmm. piece of advice. Chances are that world will see, a, a, it will be a different new world order. Some countries which were the top of the ladder might be uh, struggling. Some countries which have domestic consumption like India uh, will still survive and sail through. Um, what are those careers mm -hmm. which one can definitely try exploring? I am not saying that you have to tell the audience out there that this is what you should do. But mm -hmm. what are those careers post COVID? Some of them, if you can list it quickly, which audience can definitely try and explore. Okay. Thank you, Abhishek. So I'm not, um, you know, um, listing the career before that, I would like to um, focus on one thing, which is going to be very, very relevant in the post uh, COVID world, the new normal. And that is focusing on skills, you know, rather than um, careers and rather than, um, I want to aim to become this. It is more about enhancing the skills or inculcating skills in a, in a student because that is what we are aiming at. Do we know which, uh, which are the careers which are going to have a boom after uh, this pandemic? No, we don't. Honestly, we don't. So we are, we are making our assumptions. We are making our guess. But what will not fail are the skills. So um, one article which I got from Forbes, it talks about adaptability and flexibility. So that article actually talks about how important you being flexible and you being uh, ready to adapt to new environment is going to play a very, very important role in the post pandemic uh, uh, world because you know, um, even um, if you look at the world around us at this moment, who are the people who are able to survive? People who are able to adapt. People who are flexible enough to jump from one role to the other. Because there are a lot of roles which are in danger at this very moment. So uh, now if I come to what kind of... The, now these are the assumptions which are the experts in this field are, going, are talking about. So which are some roles which we see uh, being relevant in uh, post-COVID world. 
Uh, we uh, see tech savviness, which is certainly something which uh, we are looking at. Um, data literacy, it is not going to go away. Um, again, coming back to skills, what uh, companies are talking about, they want to have critical, uh, communicative, thinking skills which are there in the candidate. Uh, they want that to um, certainly, certainly come in the career. Another thing which is going to take, uh, you know, we all have started talking about it, and which is something which Sami did talk about his, uh, in his uh, um, rules. It is about the emotional intelligence of students. Now it's a time where this is one thing which all of uh, the students need to, and this is something which um, will only be developed in a student when parents will give uh, that authority, that much independence in, an, um, in a child to explore the world around them. It, it will be difficult in our country because of our culture, how we, you know, we are a very protective culture, which is very good. But at the same time, uh, we have to give them that, we have to make them accountable. We have to have them uh, get exposed to experiences which will develop emotional intelligence in them. Um, another thing, the health sector, not going to go away. But health sector, is it only going to be the doctors and the nurses? No. Uh, there, uh, a lot of focus are now going to go on the scientists and the researchers. Uh, the microbiologists, the virologists, you know, the, those uh, researchers who are actually studying viruses, those are also going to be very, very important roles. Risk management, crisis response, um, renewable and green uh, business roles, very, very important. Um, and, you know, if I take all these roles together, what we are actually aiming at, we are aiming at people who can see the bigger picture, who can make connections. That is what we have to wow, wow, focus wow. on. Thank you. Uh, Nagma, a uh, couple of very interesting things you spoke about, and I'll, I'll reiterate for the audience out there, and I'm opening the chat for a couple of more minutes. Uh, I want you guys, okay, how many of you really want me to summarize the kind of careers Nagma talked about? So if you want me to summarize the post-COVID careers that Nagma talked about, um, just type in a big Y-E-S, Y-E-S in capitals, in the chat, a big Y-E-S. I want the chat to go crazy. I want, I want all of you to go crazy just because Nagma and Samir spoke some really, really relevant stuff. And this chat is the only way you're going to motivate the other panelists out there. All right. Thank you so very much. Putting up the chat for a minute, uh, minute to two, and uh, we'll come back again on the chat. All right, awesome, thank you. Now, Nagma, what you said is skills are gonna be more important. Uh, Samir reiterated, uh, he said it in, in, a, in a more elaborate manner when he says interest with aptitude. So for me, interest is your love, uh, aptitude is your skill. So basically, both of you are trying to say that match interest with skill and then there is to be a career. Uh, so, uh, accept it. All right. Mm -hmm. Accept it. So, uh, I, and I give you my, I give my example to people that uh, I was pathetic in Excel. And when uh, I was uh, in the corporate, though I, at a very young age, I, wanted, I was at a seven figure salary, uh, you know, heading uh, international sales for a multinational company in multiple countries. Uh, I realized that 90% of the time, I am actually doing something which I'm not, which I'm not uh, liking to do, you know, so I'm making excels and I do not like to make excels and I'm talking something in the board presentation, which I'm not even aware whether it will work or it will not. And, uh, uh, you know, then I realized that what is that one thing that I'm good at? And I realized that I'm good at talking and eventually I made talking as my career, right? Today, most of us in this panel discussion are actually getting paid for talking period. Maybe it's a little crude, but it is. So most of us are effective speakers. And this is what you are trying to say that, hey, please identify your strength area. Please identify your interest, match it up with your aptitude. And then you will come up with two or three, four broad career options, wherein we'll pick up the golden rule from Samir, where he says that now do a little bit of job readiness, sh job shadowing, and figure out which one works for you. Makes sense. 
uh, the careers that Nagma talked about, guys, are data. Data is the future. Nagma talked about that people who are interested in sciences need not just focus on medicine. You can look at microbiology. You can look at bacteriology. You can look at virology. Uh, I will add one more career to it, which will see phenomenal growth post COVID because COVID is something, it's a crisis which the world has never ever seen. And that career is called being an epidemiologist, the study of epidemics, right? And you will not believe people out there. Almost $2 billion is being raised by you know, Gates and Melinda Foundation uh, only and only for research towards viruses and bacteria. And this money is supposed to go towards careers where your kid and my kid can actually be in. So there is no harm in going towards a career which is, uh, you know, most of the time parents come to us and say, give us a tip to be, you know, successful in a career. Uh, generally, I end up saying that money is a byproduct. Money is like a cat. You keep on running behind it. It will never come to you. You have to have the milk in your hand so that cat comes to you, right? And the milk is your strength in that career. If that milk is there in your, in your pot, the cat will come to you. So do not run behind money. But yes, I understand money is an important element in a human life. So since it is, you can definitely look at these careers. Nagma, coming back to the next question, and again, very quickly, before we jump on to procedure and help her do the next poll. Uh, there is this rumor going around, and I know it's mm -hmm. a rumor because I'm also an international education expert. Uh, we will definitely rope in Ashley. We have Samir and everybody here who are also into international education uh, and both in India and international education. Rumor that, that is going out there is SAT is no more required. Uh, you know, universities have given SAT, uh, given SAT a toss. Now, you know it. I know it. It's a rumor. We have read the fine print. We have gone through the entire details. Uh, uh, people don't understand that profile is a gray, gray area. Uh, you know, I completely respect when Samir says uh, less is more. Uh, and, and if we have time, I would do request Samir uh, later on in the panel discussion to, to spread some uh, thought on, uh, on what is the difference between a breadth profile and a depth profile. Because what Samir is talking about depth and most of us what we do is breadth, uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So we will come back to Samir on that. But can you help people understand that SAT is still required? Why or why not? And, and how does it help? Okay. Uh, so this is a very um, clear question. So um, SAT is something which uh, the universities, uh, a lot of universities have talked about it being, uh, they are going test optional, which means that the SAT, you can uh, put in an application without SAT too. But again, if there are SAT scores, they will look into it. And sometimes good SAT scores will give an edge. So that is first thing. The second thing is um, a lot of scholarships are still dependent on SAT. So uh, these are the things uh, which, uh, and still uh, universities are announcing. So we can't uh, give a blanket statement at this time that SAT is not going to be required next year because we are still in the process and the universities have not, um, you know, for the next few sessions have uh, talked about what they are expecting and you know, what they are not. So I won't say that it is not required. That is, uh, that is right now. I agree with you. Thank you, uh, Thank you Nagma. Thank that you. It's a rumor. In the interest of time, I'll have to cut you short there, Nagma. But, but uh, parents out there, this is very, very critical information for all of you, what Nagma said. SAT is, some universities are saying that they have become test optional which means that you can now file their applications without SAT. However, they will still prefer the SAT score because that's the only standardized test score. Now, uh, some of the panelists here might differ with me, but this is purely out of my experience. And, and you, you have all the right to cut me short if you differ with me. Personally, my experience is even when you apply to Canada, which is SAT not mandatory, I see a lot of students who quote their SAT scores in universities like UBC or UT or McGill, why are these kids who end up getting scholarships? That's simply because when you give to a university something more than what they ask for, that's when they start valuing you. So please take the SAT. Another beautiful fact that I want to bring it out to all the parents because there are some of you who are from the B and C category towns, might still want to stay in India, are not looking at abroad. 
30 universities in India, mostly liberal arts, not essentially sciences, but mostly liberal arts, uh, I have, have started accepting SAT in India. So SAT is one exam which can avoid your child to write multiple entrances as long as you have done your research right, as long as you have studied what kind of universities uh, are accepting SAT in India. Thank you so much, Nagma. Abhi, Abhishek, just to, just to add, one of my students have got a Bennett University computer science offer just based on her SAT. Wow. So just okay, to let so, it. So SAT is still being accepted. I know of that Manipal is taking in for some courses. Samir might differ there because he has more information. But yes, uh, Samir, uh, uh, you wanted to say something? Yes, yes. I think uh, it's a good idea if you choose a university which is accepting SAT because some universities like Bennett, I know Ramaya, my child has already an offer from Ramaya Institute of Technology uh, based on SAT score. I think uh, College Board is in conversation with BIT and they might also accept yes. it. So I think so when you choose a college from the list of your college, reach out to either College Board or reach out to the university and check out whether they uh, take SAT or not. But as Abhishek rightly said, one standardized test rules out possibility of doing multiple tests across different universities. So it's SAT or any standardized test is going to stay on right now for now. Right. Thank sure. you, Samir. Thank sure. you so much. Uh, I pass on the mic to Prasija. Prasija, uh, over to you. Uh, if I think you want, it's about time you want to conduct a poll. And uh, again, in the interest of time, we are already very close to 12.30. I don't see this getting over before one o'clock. So let's quickly, quickly go ahead and do the poll. Um, so uh, all the attendees, and this is exclusively for the students, the students who are hearing me. Um, here's a poll and we just want to understand um, you know, how you feel or what do you do when you're actually confused about when to do this. Okay, so this is a student only poll which Prasija has created. Uh, and Prasija is a very experienced and seasoned counselor from Stonehill International School, Bangalore. So guys, we really want a lot of responses. We have close to about 423 fluctuating between 423, 450 all the time. Uh, let me have quick 250 odd responses understand, uh, you know, help us understand, help procedure understand so that she can pour, uh, pour up questions accordingly to the other panelists. Right, right. All right, just for your understanding panelists, we are way above 5,000 on the Facebook group. Uh, it is 5,342 as of now, fluctuating 30, 40 here and there. So you have to pardon me there. Uh, so it's, it's going really, really nicely. Okay, so now yeah. I'm going to take over. Um, thank you, Prasita. And thank it's you. It's interesting to see the poll results here when the students are taking the poll. Uh, only 12% of students actually rely on their friend for advice, which means they are well read. They are quite aware of what they want and how they want to go ahead and tread. Um, because 34% of students have mentioned that they seek career guidance and career coaching. And a similar number of students also read up articles. So they are doing a lot of self study. So I think it's a good thing for parents to have quality conversations because your kids are way ahead of. Uh, you know, our time. So, yeah, I, I'm going to end the poll with 52%. So there is a very interesting thing happening here in the second question. And this is very, very important so that other panelists uh, can focus on this. The yeah. question was, how many career paths have you heard? Uh, and we have talked about it. Samir did mention about it. And the one com uh, commonly known. No, no, this wasn't the question. Where is the poll? The poll is, how many career paths have you heard apart from the commonly known? And... Uh, there are almost 45% of students who said... 45% so of the students are saying that they have heard about lot many, but they aren't sure how to get there. Yeah. So which means I know how that data science or data mining is a great career, but I do not even know what to do yeah. to get yeah. to become a data scientist. Now right. this, is, this is not right. This is not right for all the audience out there. So we would have to spend some time on this answering what, what to do. All right, super awesome. Over to you, Nagma. Oh, thank you. So today uh, we are fortunate to have uh, someone in our panel who uh, deals with uh, both national curriculum as well as the international baccalaureate. Uh, we have Ms. Tanushri uh, with us. Uh, welcome, Ms. Tanushri. Uh, so okay. I'm not going to uh, make it easy for you two because I think that is how we are going today. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you this, Ms. Tanushri. The first question uh, is, and the most complicated, um, you know, conversation which I have uh, come across is this, when parents ask me, which is the best fit 
what do you think is the national curriculum a better fit or is ib the way to go so over to you mr uh, it's not it's not easy tanushri it's definitely not easy so basically she is asking you to choose out of both the curriculums your school offers which one would you suggest to your your own kid a cbsc or an ib all right uh, thank you for posing this question and making my life very difficult Uh, i thought that it's going to be an easy sunday listening to all of you but it's not going to be like that uh so this is a question which i always get from my students and parents also and uh you know when they decide about cbsc or ib it depends upon and you use the word which the parents and students mostly overlook is the right fit you know they say which is the curriculum that they should be doing so the curriculum that fits you nagma might not fit me because we are very very different individuals and we are we have different skills that we have all spoken about so uh, when we talk about uh, these choices the students mostly they come and they say uh, ma'am um, rinku mommy's son has taken ib so he, my parents are saying that even i should take ib so or you know um, i'm not able to do the rote learning with cbsc and that's the reason why i should be taking ib so a choice of the curriculum should not be on the basis of because you're not able to cope up with the other curriculum ib if i give you a broader understanding if the child has uh, uh, you know skills which in in critical thinking or has analytical skills can research really well loves to work in a team can think out of box you know has good study habit submitting uh, submitting assignments on time so uh, what i say is ib is not an easy program to cope you know you feel that there's a continuous learning process that happens so you feel that that's going to be an easier option my suggestion to parents and students have always been that do a proper research talk to teachers talk to uh, the people who are aware of the program and see whether that clicks with you or not the second conversation that i generally have with them is what are they going to do after they complete if i talk about ibdp program that is what we offer at shivnath school uh, what are you going to do it after grade 12 so if you are looking at say universities abroad or the new age universities that most of us have spoken about whether it's ashoka shivnath university kriya university they take both the curriculums really well because they are not look only looking at the scores but they are looking at a holistic profile and ib really helps them out it prepares you for the university but if the student says that i am looking at say delhi university or i am looking at iit or i am looking at only nlus then you need to rethink i am not saying that ib as a, is a closed door for you but evaluate the options properly because it might just conflict with the time that your results are going to be out or it's going to conflict with the entrance exams that's going to happen or maybe conflict with your ib assessments so these are certain things and cbsc students also they are accepted all across the globe you know they get into iv league uh, they get into the best of universities in india and abroad so you have to see what fits you the best and then take the option and not because your friends or your uncles or your cousins are asking you to do so Yeah. Nagma, I really love you for asking these kind of questions because these are the typical questions which parents really, really struggle up, uh, struggle with. So, guys, uh, uh, this is very, very critical for you, and I want you guys to motivate us further. Give us a big, big A in the chat. Just give us a big A for the way it is going. Appreciate us. Applaud us. Uh, you know, the, your A is basically the loud clap we get to hear. through the chat just give us a big a so that we know that you guys are with us and our voices are reaching to your heart not just to your ears all right thank you so very much guys thank you so very much for doing that to us and motivating us and appreciating the effort that we have taken thank you tanushri a uh, amazing yeah. amazing reply so ib is a very very rigorous curriculum uh, see if you are uh, what tanushri said is see if you are uh, research oriented if you love to work in a team if you are a self learner there will be a lot of typed and written assignments that you need to submit it is not uh, it is not simple program yes it's a very very holistic program the beauty is it allows you to study economics with biology it allows you to study history with physics so uh, so it's it's good it's it's a great program but then do decide uh, about ib versus national curriculum i would not say just cbse 
it could be ICSC, it could be the state board, because I do know that some of you are representing state boards as parents. So uh, if it is a national board versus an international curricula, uh, your discussion with your career coach, whoever it is, a school counselor, becomes very, very critical and do focus on the strengths of the child. Thank you. Uh, who is going to take it next? So Abhishek, uh, there's an, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Tanushri one more thing uh, before we proceed. Um, so uh, thank you for that, Ms. Tanushri, because it is basically what comes easily to you, right? You very rightly pointed out that uh, I am going to be different than you. So which brings us to the next question. Um, so how do, uh, you know, after my curriculum selection, how do I select the right subject? What is, what is, how do I go about the subject then? So this is another anxious point or a confusing point for students and parents when uh, they are almost in grade 10. And then they have to suddenly decide firstly, which curriculum they are going to take. And secondly, what subjects they are going to study. So I'll just explain it through the examples that uh, we generally follow in our school. Uh, what I do is there has to be a heart to heart conversation with the child to understand because there has to be a mix of many things and not just one. And I think so Samin has also mentioned that during his conversation. And uh, that's the reason why the life of counselors is so very, very difficult, you know, because there are no easy answers and there is not a single answer for everyone. It's going to be very different for an Abhishek or Nagma or Ashley for that matter. Okay, so uh, when we talk about subjects, we generally, I generally see that there is always an inclination to go ahead with the subjects that's trending or they feel that that's going to get them more money or that's going to bring in a lot of fame and that's going to be like, oh, this is a cool subject that I can take. So that should not be the case. Uh, it, if it's, it happens organically, that's absolutely fine, but there has to be a process. Like what I do is when I sit with the student, I do a SWOT analysis with the child, which is basically to understand the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And a long chat to understand where the interest is, what's the personality of the child. And then uh, the diagnostic tools also, which Samir spoke about. So I'm not saying that that is going to be the deciding factor for me because it also depends on how you're taking the assessment. So that is just going to be a reference point whenever I get stuck, you know, I'm not able to decide on what could be the uh, better option for the child. The most important factor for me is the qualitative feedback that I take from the teachers. And that is very, very important. I have a grid in my school, which I share with my teachers. And after the observation, because the teachers know that these are the questions that I'm going to ask the teacher, so how the child is in the class, what is the amount of participation? You know, what was the, you know, spark that you could see in the child? And with our school, because the class size is small, the, the teacher knows each and every child really well. So that, that kind of data really helps me. And the next component is definitely we bring in parents also, because, uh, you know, they are uh, the stakeholders, they have equally to participate in the decision that the child is making. So we should get them somewhere when we are deciding on these subjects. And the next component, again, that I decide on these subjects is related to what the child is planning to study. So again, to explain you with an example, if the child says that, ma'am, I'm scared of math, I'm going to drop math, but I'm thinking of taking up economics at the undergrad level. You know, so then it becomes a sticky situation. I'm not saying that there is not a possibility of doing that. There would be options, there would be universities wherein you can do a foundation course and get into economics, but it's very important for the child to understand what is the course composition of the subject or the program that the child is going to do. You know, if it's math heavy, even if you get into the university, will you enjoy that? You know, so please evaluate these things very, very carefully. Now, second, uh, you know, example that I would want to give you is supposedly if the child says I want to do engineering. Now, engineering from where? So if the child says I want to get into IITs or NITs, then the discussion is very simple as of now. We still don't know about chemistry because, you know, the talks are on. But as of now, it's physics, chemistry, math. And then obviously my suggestion would be take a lighter uh, fourth subject so that you can prepare for your entrance exams. 
But then if the child says that I want to get into U US university or Princeton or you know, those kind of universities, then again, I evaluate the personality and the interest and the aptitude of the child and see if I can put an element of social science into the combination that the child is to, you know, looking at. So there are various things that we need to see. And when the child takes the combination also, many a times they are confused. So if you feel as a parent that your child is the one who is confused, believe you me, he is part of the 99% of the children at the same age group. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have to help them out. So what we do is once they select these subjects, there, there are possibilities that they are confused between two subjects. So we do a subject exploration week as well wherein they are allowed to sit through the other classes as well, have conversations. We get experts, subject experts, because many a times when we are the ones who are talking about it, might not work that well. But when Abhishek will come and say the same thing, they will, you know, take note of that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. obviously there are many, many factors that we look into and before they decide, you know, this is the journey that they go through uh, as far as Shrimati school students. Wow, wow. So Thank now, you just so drop much. in for a second. Yeah. I need to talk to the audience. All right, guys. So here is the deal. We have uh, three or four more panelists left. And believe you me, the way we have planned it is where we have kept the best for the last. So not to say that Tanushree and Samir were not the best, but we have definitely kept the best for the last. And uh, I really want you guys to hold on because this is going super interesting. When Tanushri says that subject choice is not that a simple decision, I see five people in the room nodding their head when they say subject exploration in my school is done. I saw a big nod from Samir that yes, we do this subject exploration week. So if your schools do not allow subject, subject exploration, my request would be that as parents go out there and request the school to allow something like this because this is a best practice. Let the child explore the subject. Also, what Tanushree said was really critical. You don't like math, but you want to do economics. How is that possible? Because there will be statistics. But even international curriculum, so in international curriculum, it is still allowed because you have in IB, you have four choices of mathematics. You have AA, AI, HL, SL. So there are four, four combinations possible. Now, in CBSE also, our curriculum, and let's give the credit to CBSC, the number of schools that CBSC manages in our country and outside country is huge. So they are also evolving with time and I've, I've heard that they have come up with a newer, lighter mathematics subject, uh, which will be easier for kids to deal with. Uh, so hold on, uh, exploration is very, very important. Thank you so much Tanushree for, for doing that. Uh, uh, awesome. So. Uh, now we are uh, we are we are supposed to do a poll. I so, believe. Yes. Uh -huh. So um, Satija will um, start another poll, uh, which uh, is again a student poll, which you are doing the procedure. So um, Satija is going to post it while I'm going to um, hand over the mic to Dr. Satija. She is going uh, to answer some awesome. of our so, relevant questions here. Super awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Nagma. So we have Dr. Shitija next. She is the uh, guidance counselor, school counselor, admissions officer, a PhD in economics from Hopetown Girls, Dehradun. And, and I, did, uh, take your, uh, in, uh, I did do your introduction, Dr. Shitija, but unfortunately that time you were in a different room. So thank you so much for joining in from Dehradun. Hopetown is one of the finest girls schools in the country. Thank you so much for taking our time. Before uh, we ask you the question, uh, Prasija, let's have the poll. Sure, sure, Abhishek. Um, thank you. I think great discussions, great points. Uh, you know, I can see the Q&A parents are very engaged, giving us a lot of input. Yeah, even after 90 question. minutes, we're still holding on to 400 in the Zoom yeah. room. So yeah. that, uh, it doesn't get better than that. Right. So uh, before Kshitija answers this question, I just wanted the students or, uh, you know, parents all can take this poll and just let us know what you think. Is subject selection absolutely important for the career choices you make? Or can you go ahead into any career without having a, uh, you know, sort of a particular quintessential subject choices? Um, and I can see the poll overwhelming response. Oh my God, it is very tilted towards 100%, almost yes. like 90%. Yes, I think it's exciting wow. to see that. Um, and I think, Shitija, you have, I think all the, all the attendees uh, hold on towards Miss. And, and, and you, know, you know what, panelists, this is a representative sample of 10 cities yeah. in India. So yeah. when we are talking, you know, I will tell you 
the kind of uh, there are some pages on the on the facebook where uh, uh, they do not see the poll and uh, i am typing in the poll question there and it is very very similar so facebook has much right wider reach than zoom room uh, considering our community is huge so guys uh, this yeah. is for your understanding before dr shitija jumps in i just want mom- yeah sorry yes, uh, yes uh, abhishek i was so uh, looking at this response i'm so uh, you know i cannot uh, control myself uh, so parents feel students feel subject selection is absolutely important for the career option to choose i'm just going to give you one small example of an outlier that i have experienced in my career uh, not saying that it is not important at all but this is something that has happened recently so students studying um, ib taking math physics chemistry typical uh you know pcm combination fit for engineering or computer science decides to a uh, last minute i mean changes her mind says i want to do music haven't done anything in music all she does is sings um she goes ahead and gets an offer for work to from berkeley college of music um you know so yes subject requests are there um, but i think passion is equally important uh, so yes over to mikshita ji thank you prasija uh, thank you abhishek for giving us this platform it's really amazing to see the participation everyone is making out here so uh, i But think it is Sijar, we are not going to make it easy for you so uh, <laughs> i'm here with a question for you um yeah, sure. so there there had been a lot of discussion chitija regarding uh, we need to do this we need to do that we need to have dinner time talks we need to prepare ourselves my question to you is how early one needs to start yeah so the right time yeah so i would uh, definitely you know uh, kind of extend what uh, samir had uh, begun uh, during his answering to you that uh, he said he he is rightly mentioned that you know we should begin as early as possible at least till uh, by grade 8 because some of the schools offer for a subject selection at grade 8 but uh, you know uh, even if to start early or so but the most important thing as a parent as a counselor we need to tell our children you know like that why you know that why is not clear with anyone uh, not the parents not the children that why we are choosing this even a grade 8 par- child would not know that what subject i should be taking so that kind of exposure and understanding you know the passion and uh, the passion and the likings and that why that we are choosing this career what is the why because you will find every one of us will find the answers on google how to become a how to become b c and to so on and so forth but you there is no one to answer that why you know and as sami mentioned that there was a student of her his who was like from grade 4 to 12 she was i want to become a doctor but then suddenly she ch- switches over right the reason is because that girl did not know that why i want to become that so that the most important thing i for me and what i suggest for my students and to all the parents is to you know un- understand that why that why we want to do this why my child wants to do this and to understand that why the most important thing is to expose you know if any parent is uh, you know advising their child that become an engineer become a this thing become a that thing but then you they are not telling that why he should be doing it what will he get once he becomes an engineer or doctor or anything to understand that why and that why answer has to come from a child because that child is going to live with that career for his entire life and luckily i mean there are these uh, the children these days the generation these days are lucky that they have so much of exposure they have Uh, counselors like us working with them 24/7 but when we all were growing up we didn't had anyone so probably that's why uh, we all are uh, you know becoming uh, we we all are doing what we love to do at this stage of life as abhishek mentioned right so uh, had we uh, been exposed that why we should be doing this whatever we had started off earlier we would have uh, you know uh, we would have become speakers these perspective speakers at a quite young age like prasita because she understood that why quite early so mm-hmm. you know, even uh, i have seen lot of girls and uh, you know lot of people who who in the second innings of their life comes to education for certain reasons but then why not to become a teacher if you really love to share your knowledge right from the beginning 
why not to become a counselor when you you know you want to you love to advise people mm-hmm. if once we that understand that why as a counselor as a parent and most importantly a student un- understands that why then the life is going to be really easy the kind of you know the things which we talk now that my student is in the depression he dropped out of the engineering he dropped out of the medical he didn't he he qualified need but he does not want to go for the uh, medicine so these things will really be you know th- this will go less once we have a proper career planning and the proper answers to us because yeah. before deciding that what we are getting into great so dr shatija this is great you just talked about how you know we have information and it is a google world we live in a google world and everyone can get the information but as long as you are not able to understand the why and why this is where you know the whole um point of what samir also shared mentor that comes that you know yeah. you need to sometimes figure it out and i would like to add it here that you know the parents talking about why i can't be the mentor here you know sometimes it becomes tricky because a mentor need to be objective and yes. as parents like i can't be a good mentor for my children that i know so a mentor need to be someone who is from outside right so um, yes. yes you talked about the why and which also you know i read it somewhere which i loved and i you know this talks about us that our uh, role now is not as a service provider we are now yes. doing an educational act and that has become very very important we all are here today not providing a service but we are here today doing an educational act and that is the core of this movement so moving so, um, forward dr shatija from uh, what you have shared what uh, what are going to be the best practices in school to aid decisions making for parents something you can talk about we talked about subject exploration can you talk a little bit about career exploration the next stage and shatija this yeah. is a, this is just to interrupt this is important because i can see uh, only questions related to career exploration uh, all across the facebook the best part is guys that we are still holding on to about 4500 plus uh, across all facebook pages and i'm still not including the zoom zoom is only for us to get motivated it's basically the reach of high school moms as a community through various facebook platforms which makes us what we are today so uh, my uh, my request is that this is in the interest of everybody from a b category town c category town Uh, bangalores of the world and gurgaons of the world also so uh, so please help us with a very broad based approach which suits all the parents out there yeah so uh, in terms of career exploration i would start with the poll and i was just seeing at the poll results what uh, prasija had posted that how uh, subject selection is uh, you know related to career options and i could see a lot of yes there so i'm sorry but i would be little different here because while we are choosing subjects and also uh, when we are looking at the careers related to it we need to be a smart selector right because the career career sometimes uh, you know uh, we we need to understand that while we are exploring a career what kind of a subjects are there but then before the career and between the career and the uh, you know the subjects comes the undergraduate college and university so before reaching out to our career we need to go to those universities and the point is that how do we get into there so sometimes like we all know that in india still few of the universities are uh, more on merit based uh, they look out for your 95% plus or something like these but uh, most of the college uh, universities are becoming entrance based so you need to just find out that what am i going to do in my grade 11 and 12 so that i reach to my university as we all have been discussing about making a profile and everything i understand all of this happens but then what about subjects so as tanushri also said you know economics we lost your voice uh... economics and uh, does not uh, want to you know is not doing well in maths but then you have to be a smart planner all the university is looking as that you should have mathematics in your statement of marks that you have studied mathematics they are not saying that you should be a topper in mathematics so don't be afraid of taking up maths and i am sure that every child sails through it and be 
uh, you know contain that eligibility to apply to their dream college or something right so career exploration starts right after the you choose your subjects there are many careers which are not subject specific uh, as we have mentioned earlier clat mass media uh, these are not subject oriented careers you can study anything at grade 11 and 12 that you love to and you can reach out to these careers so the ch children and parents have to be very careful while doing it they should be smart they should be making a lot of smart choices and coming on to career exploration i feel the best way to uh, do the career exploration is to talk and reach out to mo more and more people and understand the different careers we uh, you know like when we were growing up they, we never thought of careers like youtuber blogger or uh, you know these things but these are careers now we never knew that there will be digital marketers there will be pr firms so uh, so these are the also careers which people should look out to we should not stick to those conventional careers there are so many careers and in fact i would uh, like to keep it this way that if you are passionate about uh, something it can be your career all is need is to have a right direction that you reach out to that place money will come automatically so and i hope that to all of us as a panelist here this has happened we were not born as a career counselors we didn't study to become career counselors but eventually we are doing what we love to do it right so uh, this is how the best, is, the best part is shitija that people ask us about zillion careers nobody yes. asks us whether how to become a career counselor today, yes definitely yes. is a studyable profession you you and me learned it through experience and then got certifications but yes, today yes. today career counseling is a very very studyable profession there are diplomas degrees around career counseling and the best of the certifications available anyways thank you so very much dr shitija if if you if i may request you to just quickly wrap it up before we yeah, move on yeah so i would just wrap it up by saying that if you are uh, aiming towards the right career the right amount of planning and the smart planning i was as i say that our phones have become also smart these days so you also have to be smart enough and the smart planning can lead you to your careers and that is the best way to explore and reach out to your dream jobs and everything thank wow. you so much um, before i go to prasija my question and my request to all the attendees out there how many of you really want to hear one tip from each of these panelists at the end of the discussion one tip that will work for all of you if you want to hear it type in a big yes y e s in capitals in the chat and my my number two request to all of you is to answer this how many of you really want to hear about one innovative career that you can really consider and possibly start exploring innovative which is other than engineering innovative which is other than medicine uh you know if you want to hear that apart from yes i want you to type a again a capital a again for innovative career so that we know that we have to talk about it this will push us all right all panelists look at the number of a's be ready with one innovative career in your mind which you going to tell which is new uh which is i understand what dr shitija says that technology has made lot of thing democratic today you can become a musician you can become a youtuber you can become a blogger Uh, it's very very democratic today to become an actor you don't need to have a khan or a kapoor at the end of your name uh, to become an entrepreneur you do not need to have an ambani at the end of your name so uh, so please be ready because the 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 janta is really excited hearing all of you over to you procedure thank you thank you so uh, you know if I, if i have to talk about um, uh, you know one one career that i feel post pandemic is going to carry gain a lot of attention is also the sports industry we all play sports but when it comes to 11th and 12th we stop playing games and solely board exams but i think the sports industry is also going to see a big big change with online uh, you know uh, olympics and online sporting events going to uh, take more uh, of of the space and there are so many careers associated with that so i think parents and students you might want to explore a little bit on that moving forward um we have ashley and we have mr namika now when i was reading Q and A. A lot of uh, questions were, um, you know, directed towards 
what can i do with pcm uh, how can you know, can i what careers are available in economics so again it brings me back to ashley ashley you've been dealing with the us uh, you know students across the globe spe- you specialize in the us admission system we have a lot of parents who are considering studying abroad in us is one of the top destinations for most of our students and parents if you could give us um, you know quick uh you know statements or quick quick advice from your side about how important is subject selection for a university abroad specifically in math so how important is maths ashley when it yeah. comes to a uh, university admission and i'll make the question a little broader and make it more difficult for you uh, prasija was supposed to be uh, you know really nasty to you we already, we already have been by making you wake up at 12:00 or 12:30 in the morning uh, uh, so uh, so uh, Broadly, progress to be a candidate. How important is maths? Because maths is something like a, like a decision maker for an Indian parent. An Indian parent always wants to know: Do I study maths till high school? Do I not? All right. So, how important is maths for in in high school for an American university? So, um, as many of you know. The, the U.S. system is very different. So, they really want to see that students took. four years of all of the core subjects not just math not just science um but then math and science in general are much more important for careers uh, for college majors like engineering and computer science so if you are sure that those are the, you know those are the careers that you're interested in and those are the majors that you're going you're going to pursue in college you do need to to take the highest levels available to you Um something that's really important to point out is that colleges are aware that each school that each school there and each school here all of the high schools have different curriculums available to their students so they're going to be able to see you know whether or not you took what was available at your school did you take the easy way out or did you take the highest level that was available at your particular high school they want to see that you that you challenged yourself in all of the subjects but if you're looking for something like engineering or computer science they want to see in particular that you really challenge yourself in math and science for all four years right so thank you ashley i think that was crisp and very clear in what the universities are really looking at it's a mix of um, you know combination of rigor some amount of subject prerequisite and basically what you've done with that subject um, so i think that that's a great input also can you just give us a little bit input of how the us um education higher education sector look like, looks like at this point of time um due to you know the covid situation a lot of parents are a little anxious um and would like to know your take as well yeah so it's changing every day right now i think you know everybody's trying to be very um optimistic right now and positive and many schools have already announced that they will open this fall some of them have different kinds of plans you know maybe they're going to open a month later or some of them are starting their fall breaks earlier in order to avoid the flu season and give students longer winter breaks to possibly be able to go home with their families for a longer time and avoid um you know being stuck here for something um in general though you know i keep telling people don't panic you know don't veer from your path stick stick with the plan that you've already made because colleges are aware of the situation all of the students are in the same boat you know if if they announce that campuses are closed everybody will be doing their school online and if you decide to take a gap year or you know cancel your college registration the question is what are you going to do for that year that you just that you just took off you know there there aren't a lot of options right now uh, at this time and making last minute plans is not the best but i just say you know be positive keep in touch with the colleges and you know don't be afraid to call them or you know don't be afraid to send them an email and just let them know your thoughts and work with them right right in my opinion also i i would second you ashley because uh we've been advising students to keep in touch with the universities and they've been extremely flexible and adaptable um in the situation and they are trying to understand parent situation if it whether it's a financial constraint or a constraint but not able to you know fly and be attend on campus some have uh, you know issues with uh, not being able to have lavish equipments to do online so i think universities have been extremely extremely patient with all of this 
and again my advice to uh, parents and students would be reach out um you know let them know what you have in mind and they'll be very happy to help you out also you know uh, coming back to my again question that i i am a quintessential indian parent and my first option to look when my when i'm doing uh, my career planning for my child is look in look in you know in the country itself and not look abroad because of a variety of reasons one is also there is a mindset that um you know us universities are not that accessible or it's only for the elite or it's only the ivy league that are there in the us um and i think it's also not because of anything but it's also about lack of awareness about the smaller liberal arts institutions or other institutions that are there to uh, you know still uh, who who are still known for skill building and still take care of the students as good as what an ivy league would do so i think if you could just give us a little insight of is um us you know are us universities you know accessible to everybody across the world if yes what are the few take you know points that you would want our parents to know today um the answer is yes absolutely i believe there is a college for everybody you know we have we have over 3000 colleges in the us a all different sizes, all different types. So, I just recommend, you know, really start researching early as many people have mentioned today, starting early to just kind of, you know, read their websites, look at the different um I don't really like the rankings, you know, uh look at look at the individual websites and research the programs and research what they have that interests you beyond also the college major, you know, do they have activities that you're interested in? Um in general the acceptance rate across the US is greater than 60%. So when you're talking about the really selective schools that have less than 5%, there aren't that many of them and you're you're really limiting yourself and limiting your options. Right. If, if you really want to come to the US to study, there's definitely a place that would be happy to have you and a place where you would you would fit both socially and academically. Right I think there are a lot of scholarships available this financial aid available which um you know when they when they uh, when, when when students start actually planning they come to know that okay there's more or to it uh, which was not rather published on a you know on a bigger website uh, so students and parents if you're looking at us i mean I, i'm sure ashley will also agree there is more uh, you know options to manage your education financially if that's what you're looking at in terms of courses great choices great selection out there um you know i also understand ashley if you can just give me one statement and what's your take on best fit we talk a lot about best fit how would you decode that for our parents Ooh, um you know I think best fit for me is finding a school where where the student will be successful both inside and outside of the classroom. So, you know, if students aren't happy, they're not going to get good grades and they're not going to graduate on time. So, if you find a place that where students are able to balance both I think I I so like that statement. I had an offer from one of the finest universities in US and I am a very very summer person. So, uh, you know, uh when when I had that offer, it was very hard to reject but I ended up rejecting it because I couldn't see myself studying years uh in a very very cold and harsh climate. So, I ended up choosing something which was more uh, more moderate uh in terms of climate. So, so fitment can be on the basis of you know social fitment your economic fitment a uh, fitment in terms of clubs and activities that university has to offer and and your child because a university also wants to see uh what are you going to do on those 200 weekends 200 plus weekends on the campus um you know uh, what are you going to do will you be able to engage yourself on those saturdays and sundays which you're going to spend on that campus so it's it's a uh, it's it's fitment which is more important than ranking people please keep that in mind a uh, procedure can we quickly go to uh, go to anamika and do you have any other poll or you have no, straight I, no i don't have any other poll um, and i can you know quickly jump on to anamika and this is i think this is a larger part of our audience and they've been waiting patiently thank you everyone for being so patient a lot of our anamika ma'am if you're hearing me a lot of our um, students and parents are gearing up for indian admissions what would be your um, you know advice uh, to all the parents looking to take admissions in india how does one go about you know selecting colleges considering there are so many of them and it is such a complex education system how does one go about selection of colleges in india 
So uh, procedure, once uh, the student has decided upon the course uh, that he would like to pursue, I think the next few key aspects would be uh, definitely to check the ranking of the course and the institution. Each university has its own area of uh, uh, teaching and research strength. So your field of study should be the specialization of the university for sure. Then definitely the affiliation of the university is important. That should be recognized by UGC or NAC or other uh, recognition boards. This is extremely important because we still have many universities which are you know, deemed to be and uh, in the process of getting their affiliation. Then, um, the curriculum and the internships uh, with about the course uh, that the child wants to pursue may want to uh, you know child may want to know more about that uh, that if the university is offering a lot in that uh, area also for students who are passionate about uh, co-curricular activities they may want to know if they can pursue them ahead in college and that could be a key aspect for them and last but not the least procedure would be uh, the campus recruitments, you know, getting an idea about um, how many students are getting placed every year and which companies are coming over for recruitments would give a fair understanding about the standing of the university. Yeah. Right. And Amrika, I think Anamika, that those are great tips. I wish we, I had that kind of, uh, you know, buddhi to look into those when we were trying to uh, get into uh, colleges, you know, many, many years back. But thank you so much. Also, I want to understand, you know, due to COVID situation, a lot of parents are uh, kind of considering India as a potential um, next uh, destination for their undergrad. And most of the parents are also of a very, um, you know, mindset that contemporary education, they want a little bit of a modern, they want a little bit of subject choices here and there are, are also steering a little away from the stereotypical uh, you know engineering and law colleges um, do you think Indian colleges offer competitive education with a conducive environment you know considering the present situation now and I'll add, add in there Anamika ma'am uh, liberal education how good mm -hmm. how bad yeah uh, that's what that's what I want to tell the parents out there they are unaware uh, secondly most of the people who are hanging on for, for this long in this discussion, and we are still safely above 4,200. It has fallen down by 300, 400 people in last uh, 10, 15 minutes because the discussion has gone lengthy. However, so uh, Delhi University, question mark. All right. So Delhi University is a big question mark. Uh, according to me, it's a 18th century curriculum taught by 19th century teachers to the students who are born in 21st century. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I don't understand why would I pick up uh, an XYZ college even at 98% cut off uh, just because it is DU. So when you talk about your answer, I want you to tell me whether DU is in or whether DU is out. Okay. And I am do taking the offense that this is my personal opinion uh, and, and we have nothing against Delhi University. Uh, we are career counselors. So it is a personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Over to you. So um, I start with procedures questions. So yes, uh, reforms are happening procedure. And I think the earlier apprehensions that we used to have about Indian universities may no longer be true. You know, now contemporary colleges and even the erstwhile universities are coming up with uh, great courses which provide good opportunities to students. Say, for instance, now IIT Bombay has come up with a design course and we have these contemporary colleges with the liberal art uh, programs, which Abhishek wants to know uh, more about. So these are typically broad based uh, uh, program and offers a multidisciplinary approach to students. You know, they can choose from a variety of uh, courses like today you could do a major in finance with a minor in psychology. So Uh, you know, it's like the contemporary colleges are coming up with more opportunities to students to choose from. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we already discussed about uh, colleges coming up with uh, their uh, alliance with college board and uh, accepting SAT score as well. So yes, uh, I would say the universities are uh, reorganizing and remodeling in terms of their management, leadership, the way teaching and research are being conducted and also uh, with the international col collaborations. We have uh, many uh, contemporary colleges now coming up with interesting partnerships with uh, global universities where they invite the visiting faculty over here to conduct classes or also they have uh, the 
options to students to do a semester abroad and uh, experience the uh, academic and cultural uh, environment there. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, Pasija, the corporate sector in India is also evolving. Mm -hmm. So we have we are seeing these colleges having great uh, tie ups with uh, universities uh, coming over for campus recruitments and uh, students can right away take a uh, you know uh, gain from work experience immediately after college so uh, to conclude here i would say that yes uh, uh, academic innovation is happening uh, global engagement is happening but uh, now coming to abhishek uh, so we have two categories of universities uh, one which uh, is only looking at uh, academic excellence only one's grades and the other which is looking at holistic development and uh, wants a student to balance his uh, grades with co-curricular activities so it's up to the students where they would want to uh, go ahead in life and then prepare accordingly where they would want to go so uh, du for some uh, students will always stay i think you know that preference uh, will be there uh, who are academically inclined and for those who are, uh, I think, uh, have maintained a balance between their all the activities, would also want to explore other options. Wow. So I think, Prasija, what Anamika ma'am said, and she said it diplomatically well, avoiding all the kind of legal suits which I might end up facing. Uh, uh, but, but having said that, yes, D Delhi University has a great legacy. And there are some legacy schools in DU, uh, Stephens, Hindu, SRCCs of the world uh, and, and if you are able to make it, yes, that legacy is good. However, please keep in mind that it is not just DU. There are some very, very good and innovative and liberal arts colleges which are allowing you to study psychology with economics, psychology with mathematics, finance with psychology. Please do explore that because interdisciplinary approach uh, is the way forward. Uh, multidisciplinary approach is the way forward. So please do explore that. And, and, and thank you so much, guys, for, for hanging on that long. Even right now, we have close to 300 just in the Zoom room. 4,200 is still intact. I have just been doing my maths mentally. That what is the kind of number we are holding on. And Samir wants to jump in. Uh, before Samir, you jump in, I'll just take a quick 30 seconds uh, to talk to the uh, attendees out here. So guys, uh, you have been parents and students listening to us. We are in the last final few minutes of our discussion. Uh, Samir wants to go in first, but before he goes in first, I really want to thank you all for holding on another five minutes and I promise you we will leave you with some amazing, amazing innovative career choices that you can definitely look at. I also want to request most of you to force your parents, mothers to be on High School Moms community so that you can have access to these great seven people out there, uh, you know, who are with me and, and you can have them answer you. Uh, you know, your queries whenever they have the, uh, you know, time at, and, and liberty at their hand. Please understand they are bombarded with their own students and taking out time out of their own personal life with their personal problems going on uh, is phenomenal. Thank you so very much, guys, on behalf of all the entire 4,000 odd parents listening to you. Samir, over to you. I think just a point on the new liberal arts um, colleges of India. I think one is important to understand that you need to do a little more study on what liberal arts education is. It's very grossly misunderstood. Liberal arts is not, you may have a liberal arts degree, but you may major in physics or major in chemistry or major in biology. Second, these universities are giving a very innovative course of three plus one. That means in the fourth year, you can also stay back in university to complete your four years of degree. And that also makes you eligible for some higher education uh, in some countries where you require, you know, additional year, four years of undergraduate degree to do your master's. So that's one point. So please do some research on what liberal arts education in India means. What, is, what does it stand for? That's it. Wow. And three awesome. plus one. Three awesome. plus one year. So now yeah. I will go in the, in the order I see the screen. And uh, I will ask all of you uh, one tip that you want to leave with. It has to be crisp. So my request to all of you is not more than uh, 40, 50 words. And you give one tip from your end and one innovative career starting with you ashley because you i it is you i see see the first um i say don't focus on the numbers focus on what's inside of you and who you are and um you know just 
Just don't be so narrow-minded. There are so many options. Wow. So world is open for you guys. Don't just focus on numbers. And parents, numbers can be deceptive. Ask all of us out here. Numbers can be really, really deceptive. It does not mean that uh, that is the end of life. Okay, one innovative career, Ashley. Uh, can you think of one career and tell us? Not super innovative. I'm sure people have heard about it, but a lot of people lately have been asking about package design. Okay, package designing. So people who want to consider designing as a career, there are a couple of designing courses, design thinking, package designing, product designing. So you can move safely beyond interior designing and fashion designing. Uh, all right, awesome. Prasija, I see you next. Um, thank you, Abhishek. So I have um, two quick tips. One is uh, follow your passion. Success will follow. I have done that and I'm an example right here in front of you. Um, second thing, especially for the students and parents, uh, you know, attendees, that the generation coming uh, next, you all are going to be doing more than one job. You all, be, you all are going to be handling more than two jobs, three jobs at a time. So get ready for the change. Start planning now and don't give up. And uh, I've worked, uh, you know, an innovative career that I, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking that will come up with the uh, tourism through virtual reality, which has already begun, but I think that's going to be the next boom. Uh, travel and tourism through virtual reality. So virtual reality is the next innovative career that our panelists are talking about. And I completely agree. Fashion is more important. Uh, you need to feel passionate about what you want to do. At one point in time, these kids will do two or three different things at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also want to tell you people out there, coding is no more uh, an academic skill. It is a life skill. So if you can put yes. your children as early as possible from grade eight or grade seven, onto a little bit of coding. They do not need to become a coder. They do not have to become a software developer, but understanding the logic behind coding, it's gonna be a life skill, which I wanna bring. Anamika, ma'am, you are next. One tip, one innovative career, quickly, please. So my tip would be, uh, students, do not limit your aspirations. Dream big and work hard to realize those dreams. And uh, the innovative career, if you love computers, then, look into gaming as well. So gaming, so all those people who are big fan of PUBGs and Fortnites, uh, please understand, I do not want to sound incorrect. Playing a game and making a game are two different things altogether, people. So just because you play the game well does not mean that you will be able to make the game well. But gaming as a career is a booming industry. You can definitely look at it. Thank you, Anamika, ma'am. Shitija, you are next. Yeah, so my uh, tip would be uh, not only for the students, but for the parents as well, that please do not uh, hesitate to reach out to counselors, career coaches for correct guidance. And because the time which will go will not come back. So let them make their choices and please allow them to follow their passion and dreams. Uh, there is nothing best that you can give it to your child other than this. Wow. Because they have been in this career for their entire life. So please allow them to, you know, give them wings to fly and reach to their destination. And I'm sure that they will reach out. One innovative career, Dr. Shitija. Uh, career would be, yes, uh, those who are very much into, you know, they like debating, you see, but they eventually say, I want to become a lawyer because I like to speak. So I would say, if you like to speak, Please become counselors, please become speakers and give direction to uh, the life of people who are just roaming around with no ideas and anything. Wonderful. India needs 15 lakh career counselors, people. Yes. And it is a very, very, very emotionally gratifying, like Samir said. And I will say monetary rewarding too, as long as you Definitely. are able to find your niche. So it doesn't get better when it is emotionally gratifying and, and monetarily rewarding. Most of the people you see on your screen right now, they end up traveling and at times it's sponsored by the universities. So if you want to travel and most of you do want to travel, it is still yes. a great career. So great. Awesome. Yes. Man, you are there, there are a lot of perks to become a career counselor also. I must tell you. Yes. Become a career counselor. Yes. Tanushree ma'am. Yes. So Yes, so I, I think so. Uh, we are in a situation wherein parents are and students are getting anxious. So one uh, takeaway for the students are that if one door closes, 10 windows will open. So please remember grit, hard work. 
and if you have the ability to accept change it can never go out of fashion so please hold on to your strengths and work towards it and for parents i would suggest that please involve your children in decision making because their minds are so uncluttered you might just get refreshing options for them not only for your children but also when you are stuck with someone take their viewpoints okay so and uh, next would be a new age career so this friend of mine had sent her son's uh, you know wed wedding video to me and it was so tastefully done and i asked her how much did you pay so i was like uh, really stunned by the amount she had paid to the the person and then i quickly searched and i got to know about this wedding filmmaker option so that is something which is very very new i was not aware of it and the children who want to you know are interested in cinematography or uh, you know directing or musicians then this is an option that they can really really look into and uh, they can really mint money if they are good at it wow thank you so very much tanishri ma'am Samir, my brother from a different mother, sharing the same Nehru jacket, just a different color. All right. So, Samir, my request to you is: I love your eight golden rules. Uh, we will definitely curate them in the form of an article and send it to all the audiences out here, including. And it will be, uh, it will be from your desk. But uh, uh, is it one of the golden rules that you want to re-emphasize, or something else? Over to you with one innovative career. You are on mute, Samir. i think one important uh, message which i want to give is picking up from abhishek's point that your i have changed three careers in my lifetime and i have been, been each career has taught me something new so even um, even if your child is not choosing the career which you think is going to be the best for him he's any is going to change in next 5 to 7 years so don't worry so let them make their own choices let them take responsibility for it and if not if you don't want to treat them as equals at least treat them as adults because that will change the that will be the game changer of the equation between a parent and a child um i think a lot has been talked about uh, uh, the automation so i think human machine instruction designer is one career i was reading about and how is it going to change that's one this thing but i i would always say i mean my favorite field would be social scientists i mean somebody who studied science since is applying study of social sciences and coming up with uh, because i know the the way the pandemic has changed the way we live uh study work and travel it's going to have an major impact on our mental health so who's going to study that and come up with ideas where we can even virtual reality through we can interact with each other so yeah these two careers are wow wow okay so guys don't get panicked we i will request the panelists to hold back for five more minutes and i will ask some of the questions which are there in the q and a because you're popping it in the q and a you're popping it on the facebook i will definitely request they've already given two hours of their time Actually, two and a half hours. We started half an hour early. Doctor Shetija, you want to you want to go in before I go to. I would say that uh, there are a lot of questions coming in. Whatever we can take right now, we can. But if at all we cannot, then probably we you they can write to you, and we all can collaboratively. I will definitely. I will send them back. The email ID. Thank you, Doctor Shetija. Nagma, before coming to you, uh, and before you give me an innovative uh, uh, career, and I will take the cheat code away from you. Okay. So Nagma is a psychologist. Let's talk about uh, psychology as a career before Nagma does. And I wanted to say that. So uh, psychology is a great, great career. Parents out there, please understand. धीरे धीरे हम सब पागल हो रहे हैं. We are becoming madder. If there is any word like becoming madder by the day, psychology is a great career. Can take you to clinical psychology, applied psychology, uh, consumer behavior, market research. Uh, it can psychology. take you to experimental psychology. it is a beautiful course you should allow your children get away from that uh, uh, thought process that it's only the science which makes a person successful it is even social sciences and humanities which can make a person successful so that's my tip over to you nagma your tip and your innovative career thank you thank you for the psychology talk um, abhishek so um, because i'm a psychologist it's going to come from psychology one quote which i rely on is from rita pearson she says every child deserves a champion a human an adult who never gives up on them so that i go with it and i feel that that is one quote which we all should as an adult we have an, a responsibility to understand uh, an innovative career um, this is not fair i'm going to uh, i'm the last 
you all have taken um, the innovative career. But one career uh, which I would want to talk about um, stemming from psychology is cognitive engineering. So a lot of universities, Penn University, I know, and a lot of leading universities have now started offering uh, cognitive psychology. For that, you will need to have a combination of physics and psychology. And then you can, um, you know, it's going to be very interesting because then we, be, we are going to talk about the cognitive abilities of uh, AI. So that's where it's so wonderful. So for all those people who want to get into AI and they think that it's only science driven, you need to understand artificial intelligence is nothing but a computer's mechanism to understand human behavior. And somebody who understands the human behavior the best is a psychologist. So when you start combining physics with psychology or computer science with psychology, that's when the careers emerge out of artificial intelligence and cognitive engineering could be one such career. For me, AI is an industry not a career. There could be zillion other careers which will emerge out of AI. It depends what you want to get into it. All right, super awesome, guys. Okay, let's have uh, let's have few few questions. I want panelists to look at the Q and A uh, and pick one question for themselves if they want to answer. Uh, before that, uh, while you are reading the Q and A, uh, if there is somebody who wants uh, to write in the questions now, you can quickly do it. We'll take Q and A for five minutes. Uh, okay, so any any panelist who wants to take up a question, you have uh, two minutes to go through the Q and A box, and 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 uh, and, and let me know. Uh, meanwhile, to all the attendees out there, while panelists are reading your questions, thank you so very much for joining in. Uh, and this is also for the panelists. You know, people are used to listening to people like you and me. Uh, we had high school moms have taken very innovative approach. Uh, we at times even bring in the students to talk to their juniors. Very recently, we pulled off a panel discussion. There were 12 seniors talking to their juniors. And uh, I request all the parents out there, all the students out there to force their parents to be on high school moms. It is only a mother's only community. So if you, are, uh, uh, if you cannot join high school moms Facebook group because you are a father, then you need to follow the high school moms dot official Instagram page. Uh, to keep on being updated with all the activities which we do from my desk, Nagma's desk, or Prasija's desk. Nagma and Prasija, thank you so very much for curating this entire panel discussion, bringing all of us together. You are not only the co-chair of High School Moms and Ines, you are the driving force for High School Moms and Ines as, as, as an organization, as a movement. And I really go down to each one of you from Ashley, from Florida, Prasija from Bangalore, Anamika from Dubai, Shitija from Dehradun, Samir from Bangalore, Tanushri from Gurgaon, and Nagma, my own, from Gurgaon, um, you know, for, for taking our time. Have you been able to pick up a question? If you have been able to, Prasija goes in first. Yes, Prasija. Um, I, I, I read a question. Um, I don't know, it was, I don't remember the name, but it was, it was talking about are service internships preferred over career specific internships and if there is a weightage when the university looks at in college um so i want to answer that question saying uh, saying that um no there is no such preference of career specific internship versus service internship um internships are not about uh, with whom are you working or which global brand are you working for or you know how many um, you know uh, stars that you're bringing in it's about the skills that you've learned um just working at a nearby garage can give you more skills than working um in a particular you know an mnc firm so it's about what skills you're learning it can be from the smallest experience um so it really doesn't matter are you going to a you know particular company or doing service um those two are you know they, they develop different kinds of skills and everything is important in that way so i as an admission officer i would look at what skills you're coming with what have you learned how well are you able to reflect how matured are you able to you know um take that opportunity and, and talk about it rather than what have you done you know i would i would want to see what have you learned from it so regardless of the magnitude uh, it's about what you bring um, as a person i want to know more so i hope i've answered that question all right, wonderful. So before I ask one of the other panelists to, Nagma, I know you are next. Maybe this is the question that also you can answer, Nagma, because, because you are a qualified psychologist. There is a question by Ritu Jain. 
clinical psychology does it demand mathematics in 10 plus 2 um it doesn't um what it demands is statistics so even if uh, you have done mathematics till grade 10 you can uh, take up in uh, your undergraduation uh, there will be in your bachelor's there will be a paper on statistics so you have to take that so it's not necessary that you should have maths in your uh, 10 plus 2 wonderful thank you nagma uh, anybody else who can take one question dr shitija what question are you taking and what is the answer please and you are on mute you are on mute dr shitija so the question which I'm taking is, uh, can I do law even if I select PCM as a stream in grade 11? So I would say yes, uh, I'm, there's no name, so I can't name the person. But uh, law, as I mentioned uh, when I was speaking, that there are certain careers which do not, which are not subject specific. So even if you have taken uh, PCM in grade 11, you can do law. Uh, for that, you have to prepare for an entrance exam for law, which is CLAT and the private uh, universities entrance exams, so which are not subject specific. They are more on, uh, you know, reasoning, English, mathematics till grade 10 and also legal aptitude. So the, this is how you need to prepare about it. So I think that answers the question. Wonderful. And I'll just add on to Dr. Shitija, for some of you who want to study law internationally, uh, maybe you want to study law in U.S., in U.S. law is a postgraduate qualification. You can do your bachelor's in any field whatsoever. Majors do not matter for you to go and pursue law. In U.S., there is nothing called LLB. The qualification is called Juris Doctorate, which is JD. And to become a JD, you need a bachelor's and then you write the JD entrance. And uh, 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 once you write that and you qualify, then you go and pursue law. Please remember, People, law is always subject to state. So if you are studying law internationally, until and unless you are studying international law or trade law, chances are you will be employed only in that country to begin your career with until and unless some consulting company takes over you as a resource. Thank you, Dr. Shitija. Anybody else in the panelists? Tanushree, ma'am, you're going in next. Okay. Yes, I, I don't remember the name of the child or the parent. Uh, the question was that if they plan to study abroad, uh, how do they prepare themselves? So it's very important that uh, the child decides on which country you want to study. If supposedly you, are, you plan to study in the US, so you'll have to understand what are the standardized tests that you're supposed to take, whether it's the SATs or ACTs or subject tests as well. So if you are going for specific programs, there would be requirement of subject tests as well. Uh, though uh, now the debate is going on whether they are going to make it optional or not, I think so Abhishek has already mentioned that earlier that uh, it doesn't hurt if you have got a good score and you plug that in because that's an additional information that you're providing to the, uh, to the admission officers. And it is not only Canada, but if you look at UCAS also, which is for UK, there is a provision wherein you can plug in your SAT or ACT scores. So please be mindful, don't take it easy, is what I'm saying. Don't just rejoice that, okay, fine, I do not have to take SAT, so life's become easier. It's going to be even more difficult because if they're looking at the holistic profile, how do you determine on whether you're going to be the right fit for the college? So apart from the standardized test you know if you say that you want to get into a particular program if it's UK it has to be very very clear that what program you want to study and your all your information or your personal statement has to be in accordance to that just getting if supposedly you want to study uh, say history just getting 98 or 99 in history doesn't do the needful when we talk to admission uh, heads in, of the universities they say that that score can be you know any child who is not even interested can get that kind of a score how do we understand that there is a passion for that so what are you doing beyond the classroom with the subject what kind of online courses are you doing what kind of conversations are you doing with your teacher are you assigned with any of the university professor for the research work so these things are very, very important. Take internships also seriously. Uh, you know, for our school, we have a mandatory internship program for our students. But if supposedly your school doesn't do it, you have to take the initiative and do it. That will also give you an insight whether that's the area that you would really want to invest for your next three years or four years. Okay, so please be mindful about it. 
The other factor which many of the students uh, use it as a tick mark is the community service because they feel, okay, fine, these many hours that I'll have to do and I'm going to impact those many people. Please understand they are going to check the intent. So there was one student who couldn't step out of the home after his school was over. I, it, that, that person was known to me because uh, his mother was a single parent and the elder sister uh, had a Down syndrome. So once the child used to be back from school, the mother could go out and work. So that was a community service. So the child couldn't go beyond uh, you know, the services that he could provide to the sister, but that also was a good service. And uh, you know, it really helped. Now what Abhishek also mentioned, please be mindful about the fact like law, uh, medicine, at times you're not able to do it at the undergrad level in the US. You might have to do your undergrad uh, in some other subjects and then you know, at the master's level, you'll be able to do these kind of courses. But if you are really keen on going abroad, say, I, I'll just take Abhishek's example, like if you want to do law abroad, uh, you know, there are a few universities, I'll give you an example of uh, London School of Economics, you can get into law, and uh, you can get into the JD program with uh, University of Columbia. So you're getting two degrees at the end, but there again, you have to have the grit and you have to be absolutely sure in what you are signing up for. So I've, I think so I've been able to Thank you so much, Anushri, ma'am. Uh, Samir, you are in next. Uh, any question that you're taking in? I've answered some question personally, but there's this one general question which I think would be interest to all the parents. So this is by Sakshi. Which careers are we closing by not choosing PCB at ninth standard level? Remember in India, if you leave your sciences at grade ninth standard level, all careers leading to majors in, my, uh, majors in sciences, you close down. Your engineering, your medicine, uh, you know, and all other related biotechnology, you're closing all those doors. So I generally recommend children, if they're not really, really struggling with sciences and mathematics, till grade 10, they should keep all core subjects. This option is primarily for uh, Cambridge students and those who study IGCSE and the ones who are in uh, ICSE. So please make sure, if you're not sure, Continue use studying these subjects till grade 10th level and then evaluate. I even had a student who did it till grade 12. She did phenomenally well, but she realized that physics is not her, uh, physics and mathematics is not something, physics and chemistry, she doesn't want to study for long. She moved to uh, St. Stephen's for economics. Uh, she did her master's in MBA Gurgaon. Now she's working at World Bank. So I think you cannot reverse from sciences to um, other subjects to sciences while you can do, from sciences, you can go to any other stream. But from other streams, you can't move to sciences back in India. So, uh, so guys, uh, this is a very, very important suggestion coming out from Samir. Uh, what you need to understand is, uh, and this is a suggestion from all of us in one voice, if you can keep your options open till the last minute, please keep your options open. There is no harm in, uh, in keeping them open. You do not need to, life is not running away. You do not need to close down your options uh, so early in life. If you can just manage to study some subjects till your high school, uh, you will be able to keep world open for you. Uh, at times, there is no knowledge without college. So at times, you want to even go to a college and experience certain subjects. Some of the new age universities allow you to uh, take in a couple of years of generic courses before you decide your majors and minors. So do that. Uh, there is no reason why at the age of 16, you really want to know what you want to be for the next 35 years of your life. Uh, you will find your way out. Uh, Prasida, do you want to go in? Uh, do you want to say something? Uh, no, I think I, I'm, I, I resonate with uh, all of the ideas that have been put there. I'm, I'm just reading the Q&A. There are so many questions that I want to answer. Uh, you know, the possibility the, of time does yes, not the the time time I But I'll definitely try and answer some of them in the, uh, in the, in the, in the handout that will get created and yes. to all the panelists. Uh, it's a wonderful day from, uh, you know, uh, for, you know, for me because uh, I never would have imagined that uh, seven of you will actually uh, join in the movement. All of you are now at thought leaders at inace.org. Thank you so very much for taking out the time, effort, um, and, and the patience that you guys have shown to over 5,000 people. The peak we hit was 5,960. The lowest that is right now is about 4,200 plus about 200 in Zoom, which is 4,400. So thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, Prasija and Nagma for curating it. Thank you, Samir, Ashley, Tanushree, Dr. Shitija and Anamika 
to join in from various locations. You guys look wonderful on the camera. This is Abhishek Gupta signing off on behalf of High School Moms and Ines.org. Thank you so very much, guys. I look forward to see you all in another webinar, another panel discussion, and hopefully in, uh, or hopefully offline, not online, very very soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, co-panelists. Yeah. Thank great. you. Bye bye. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.